guess what time it is, what time of the month, what time of the year, it's time for our first empties, skincare beauty empties of the year 2024. I have used up a lot. One of the products is also leaking, but anyway, I worry about later. <laughs> so here we are with the skincare empties of January 2024. And in case you don't know me yet, my name is Ulrike. Hi, I am a skincare and key beauty content creator and have been since 2015-16. A long time and I've had a long time using up all sorts of stuff since I think the last empties post was in October. So let's see how I felt about my empty products. Let's start with the cleansing products and let's start with this one. As I said, something's leaking in here, so it's a little bit hashtag authentic. <laughs> so first product is this one, which I'm pretty sure I've never shown on this channel because I've had it for ages. It took me ages to use it up. This is the juice to cleanse calming clean water. So this is a micellar water or cleansing water that you use for makeup removal. I'll be 100% honest here. I have not found a Korean cleansing water that I have liked and I've tried a couple now. I always find them to usually they're fragranced. I don't mind a bit of fragrance, but those are always for some reason super heavily fragranced. And I usually find them quite harsh compared to the European pharmacy brands. I still think nothing really beats the Bioderma Sensibio cleansing water. There's just not a better one out there. They are the ones that actually invented the micellar technology, so it, I guess it makes a lot of sense. They just use mm, less harsh surfactants overall, and they actually remove makeup a lot better. This one I just used on days where I would only use sunscreen and I don't really want to oil cleanse. I don't find it very effective for for true makeup, like actual base makeup and certainly not for eye makeup. It does not have the power to remove that. I think I stick to the European brands. Um, this one, I wouldn't repurchase it. It was okay as, a, as a, an alternative first step cleanser on days where I don't want to oil cleanse, but it does not really do a fantastic enough job that I would repurchase it. And then I actually have a German drugstore cleanser here that I finished. And I don't always keep my German skincare empties because I'm still not sure if you guys who subscribe to my channel are interested in German skincare, especially the one you can only get in Germany. However, I did kind of want to at least mention this brand and maybe see if someone in the comments can give me feedback on whether or not you're interested in German drugstore <laughs> or not. My German advent calendar video didn't do that well, so I felt maybe people aren't that interested in it. But um, I at least wanted to um, throw out there that yes, I do actually regularly use a lot of German skincare and I actually really like German skincare. This one is from a brand called Balea. And that's a home brand from one of the huge drugstore chains here in Germany called DM. And Balea has really stepped up its game in recent years. When I was a teenager, I don't even know if Balea existed, but if they did, it was all really low quality, not really great products that I just would never have bought. But with the skincare craze that has been happening here in Germany and on social media, all of the drugstores here in Germany have really, really started to come out with amazing products. This cleanser, which is from their Balea Professional range, which is kind of a little bit the Ordinary or Geek and Gorgeous-esque. This one is fantastic. This is already my second tube and I would always repurchase this. I might actually repurchase this tomorrow when I go to the M. So this is the Beauty Expert Peeling Cleanser and it contains 0.8% HA and 3% PHA. So it is a it's sort of like a gel cleanser. It doesn't really foam up, I've noticed. It's supposed to foam according to the instructions, but it doesn't for me. The way I use it is really just like a gel cleanser. So I just put it on my wet face after oil cleansing or whatever first step cleanser I use. And then I just um, massage it in a little bit and then just dissolve it with, with water. And it works 
so, so well. It is incredibly gentle and it will actually make the skin feel a little bit brighter and so, so clean but without stripping the face. This is beautiful for oily skin. It's amazing for younger skin. This is such a good teen product because, you know, it's only, I think, around four euros. If you have access to a DM, either here in Germany or also in all the other sort of Eastern European countries, Austria, a lot of other European countries do have DM drugstores. The Balea professional range is fantastic so many good products i would be happy to do a video on them but i would need a little bit of feedback <laughs> because again the beauty advent calendar video pretty much flopped and it would be a lot of work so like just let me know in the comments but yeah highly recommended will absolutely repurchase also this one the balea one this one is much better than the one from rossmann which is the other big drugstore chain they also have brought out a lot of sort of um Derma brand style cosmetics. I do think most of the time Balea is actually, it's a little bit better in my opinion. And then I have another cleansing product and this one I've already talked about so many times. I think this is my third empty bottle and I already bought a fourth one. There is no better waterproof makeup remover. Hands down, this is the best, best one. I will always repurchase this. It is a little bit pricier because it's a tiny bottle and it's, I think, around 13 or 14 euros, but I do not care. I don't use waterproof mascara often enough to, <laughs> to have to use it every day or I use it once a week for my videos when I actually do put on stronger mascara. And it is the only thing that truly removes, not just removes waterproof mascara, thoroughly but also so so gently and it is the bioderma sensibio h2oi by face micellar waterproof makeup mirror remover so this is one of the ones that you have to shake and then um, it turns into sort of a a mix of oil and gel but i don't find it too oily which i don't like at all i hate having anything oily around my eyes i absolutely hate it because i hate that feeling when the oils create that film over your eye oh, oh, I, I just it's i i cannot handle it so this one does not do that i also have very sensitive eyes when it comes to mascara and any type of makeup remover around my eyes so this one is just the gentlest that I've ever tried. I have not found anything better than this and I've probably been buying eye makeup removers for for good 30 years now. So <laughs> this is saying something. Okay, and let's go for body and hair care. I've got one body product here, if I see this correctly. I think that's the only one. And it's this one, which I'm pretty sure I've already emptied before as well. Maybe not. I feel I've shown this to you before at some point maybe it was in an unboxing i'm not sure at this point but this is the illy june ceramide atto top to toe wash so this is the companion shower or body wash to their very famous atto lotion which i adore i had this in a refill value pack so I've gone through this one plus refilled it with a full size refill. So I've been using this for a long time and it took a long time to empty. And I have to say towards the end, I got just a little bit bored by it. <laughs> this is very, very stripped down. It really is super gentle and super, super minimalist. It's really stripped down to just the basic cleansing function. I don't find it super moisturizing, but I also do not find it stripping. It just makes for a bit of a joyless experience, if I'm honest. Uh, I did start just missing a little bit of fragrance and I started to miss just the, the texture of it. It's just truly very minimalist. It just doesn't feel super luxurious. I think it's a fine base product and i think if you have skin issues this is a very very good choice Ely june is fantastic for sensitive skin for me personally it started just to be a little bit boring i do still adore the body lotion and have repurchased it i don't think i will repurchase this i honestly prefer fragrance body washes i just love the 
the the luxury of that in the shower okay and two hair products the first one i have also already shown you and there's a hair on it sorry i'm not going to show it in a close-up <laughs> I've shown you this because it was a double pack, so I've already emptied one, and it was maybe even in the previous empties video. I don't remember, but I'm, I remember showing it. And it's the Tree Cell Forte 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 Ample Treatment Citrus Shower. I've already said my piece about this when I showed you the first empty. It really is just kind of fine. I wouldn't repurchase it. I just don't think it's the best lamella water treatment that I've tried. I still think the Mormo one is the the absolute best one. I'm trying and trying other lamella waters, but honestly, none of them can really satisfy me and make me as happy with my hair as the Mormo one did. This one was just kind of mid, uh, not good enough for a repurchase, but it also wasn't terrible. It was okay. And then I also emptied this, which I know I've showed you before in my hair care video. One of the most popular videos on my channel, I have to do a part two because I have in fact tried a lot of new Korean hair care. So this is the Healing Bird No Wash Ultra Protein No Wash Ample Treatment. I already repurchased this, you might have seen it in my latest Olive Young unboxing because I love this so, so much. The absolutely 100% best spray leave-in conditioner treatment that I've tried both from Korea and from any Western brands that I've tried. It's so good. It leaves hair really shiny and really strong. Uh, sometimes it's a bit too much protein for me because I get protein overload a lot and very quickly. I have it at the moment. That's my, my, my hair. It's a little bit lackluster at the moment. <laughs> I have to do a bit of work to get it back to normal. But as long as I'm careful with not overdoing it, especially this one, I feel I get less problems with protein overload than with, um, you know, stronger hair treatments. It's fantastic. It also smells really nice. I love it so, so much. And I have repurchased it. One of the best products in hair care that I've tried in the last years, hands down. It's It really deserves its virality and high reputation in Korea. Okay, let's go with toners next. Here's another uh, old friend of mine, <laughs> you've probably already seen on this channel and certainly on my blog, from my favorite European indie brand, Geek & Gorgeous, the Geek & Gorgeous Calm Down uh, Exfoliant. This is a liquid exfoliant. It contains 4% PHA and I think from what I remember, 2% BHA. It doesn't actually say here on the thing, which is a bit weird. My, my favorite exfoliant. I don't know how many bottles I've already been through. Probably three, maybe even four. And they last for quite a while. <laughs> I've been using it for years and years. Out of the three Geek & Gorgeous peelings, I do think this is the best one. It is very sensitive skin friendly. It still packs quite a punch, so I still wouldn't use it. It says here you can use it daily. I would not use it daily. All the Geek & Gorgeous exfoliants are quite strong in my opinion. And if you're new to uh, chemical peels, I would still just very carefully introduce them into your routine, maybe twice a week and see what it does for you within a month of using it. This one is gentler than the other two. It works very well if you have more sensitive skin and more redness prone skin. And because of the PHA, which I just think is such a fantastic gentle acid exfoliant, it really just leaves your skin very glowy. And more so I find than the Cheer Up uh, Mandelic Acid Peel, which is sold more as a, as a glowy and glow enhancing exfoliant. In my opinion, Calm Down does that far more effectively. I love it. I will probably repurchase it. You can go just a wonderful brand. If you're in Germany, by the way, they're now available at select DM stores. So that's quite exciting. Unfortunately, not here in my city, but yeah, watch watch out for that if you live in Germany. And I have more toners. Well, I think it's one of the toners that's leaking. Ooh, oh, anyway, this is the joy of empties, but it's always so satisfying to then be able to throw them out. 
my favorite thing to do after these videos. <laughs> so it's this spray bottle. I have written about this on the blog when I did my collaboration with uh, Olive Young. So if you haven't seen that blog post yet, I share a bit of a little routine in that blog post. And this is the Ursum Cho Toner Moisturizer. Um, I like this. I, oh, Hey Nature, by the way, is the brand, I forgot to say. I would probably repurchase this. I just have 100,000 toners to get through, so not right now. I think it works better in summer because it's been formulated actually to kind of cool down the skin and it's meant to be more of a refreshing toner for more oil-prone skin with a bit of pore care thrown in there. It's one of those clean beauty brands and they kind of do have quite strong clean beauty marketing, which is sometimes a little bit annoying. Um, I tried the sheet mask from the line. I didn't like the sheet mask, but I do like this. It is very refreshing and I do find it a very hydrating toner. And it truly is very refreshing in summer. For winter, it's not enough. So I really just mostly used it during the summer months. And I also think it's maybe not the most suitable toner for mature skin. It's definitely more aimed at sort of women in their 20s, I want to say. But I still enjoyed it just as a sort of refresher um, toner that just makes skin feel a little bit cooler and nicely hydrated, yeah. The last toner, and I think this is the leaking culprit. <laughs> I found it, I think. <laughs> it's this one from Telsey, and it's the Kombucha Detox Essence. I think Telsey just kind of rebranded this a little bit because I've seen bottles with a similar but slightly different name being sent to influencers. So I've seen this around a lot lately, and the brand suddenly is sort of picking up more interest, it seems. They've been around for a couple of years, I really, really love, love this toner a lot. It contains kombucha extract, so basically fermented black tea extract, which is really nice for brightening. And I did always notice a brightening effect from this. I talked about this toner uh, or this essence, kind of the same thing, in depth in a video. I think it was on overrated, uh, underrated, not overrated, underrated Korean beauty product. So you can watch that video to get a full review. I really enjoyed this a lot and I used it especially on days where I really wanted a bit of a glow. It's also very, very hydrating. It's a beautiful first treatment essence with many, many hydrating ingredients. It's wonderful. And then I have a couple of empty eye products actually. So let's start with this one, which I feel I probably have already shown as well because I think this was already my second bottle. I'm almost certain. And I'm now in my third bottle. So again, shows you how much I love it. It's the Ordinary's Multi-Peptide Eye Serum. This is wonderful. One of those newer, the Ordinary products that really blew me away. Uh, it's just very pleasant to use around the eyes. I don't do very well with too thick textures, too nourishing textures. I get milia very easily. And I also have this problem that if it's too oily, it kind of creeps into my eyes. And then I get very inf easily inflamed eyes. This I can tolerate just perfectly. It contains a lot of really good anti-aging ingredients. That, and I do feel that it helps lift, lift the eye area quite noticeably. I hadn't used it for a while and now I've repurchased it. The moment I start using it again, I keep thinking, oh, what is it about my eye area lately? It looks a lot better because my eye area is where I see the most signs of aging. I have pretty noticeable wrinkles by now around here. I cannot afford Botox or any of those fancy treatments. So, you know, it is what it is at the moment. All I can do is use skincare. I do not have money for fancy derm treatments. <laughs> it's, it's all I can do. And it's my 45th birthday actually tomorrow. Uh, so a week after, a week before this video goes online. So you, you do what you do when you have a very small budget. But this one, I really do notice a difference. I mean, it's not miraculous, of course, but it is noticeable. And just in general, the texture is wonderful. It also lasts quite a long time because you basically only need one drop for both eyes, pretty much. And I have two more eye products. First up, it's this one, which took me 
ages to finish, if I'm honest. But mostly because it's a huge um, size. It's 30 or even 40 grams, not 30 grams. And um, you only need a tiny bit. This is the Benton Fermentation Eye Cream, which is wonderful. Um, I've had this before. I think this was in some beauty box. So even though I didn't actively repurchase it, I remember being quite excited to have it back <laughs> because it really is just a great budget eye cream. You usually can find this very cheap and it really does a very fine job just moisturizing the area. It does have a bit of a brightening effect, not super extreme, but it is noticeable. And it's fragrance-free, alcohol-free, very gentle overall. Wonderful, sensitive, skin-friendly, affordable. I really like it a lot. The only thing is that it really just takes forever to finish. And I have this tendency to get a bit bored with products <laughs> if, <laughs> if I have to use them for a really long time. It's just a me thing that is a bit silly. But I can really recommend this as a very good budget-friendly Eye cream and then the other eye cream that i finished is a, a fan favorite a, a, a community favorite from beauty of chosun everyone's tiktok <laughs> k-beauty darling <laughs> i know i tend to be a little bit snarky about beauty of chosun uh, it's mostly just because I think they're a little bit overhyped and oversaturated and I get a bit frustrated. But it's not that I don't like their products. I just don't like all of their products. And I sometimes just feel that maybe people should explore some other brands and not always talk about the same three brands and the same five products. And they have been talking about them since 2020. I just feel it's nice to have a bit, a bit of a variety. But... Anyway, be that as it may, this is their Revive Eye Serum with Ginseng and Retinol with an A. And I absolutely love it. I think it's wonderful. I actually already repurchased it because I do use this very, very often, almost every day. I don't use it on the days that I use an overall retinol serum, uh, but otherwise I usually do use this. I do find it very gentle and I do find it quite effective. Has it really helped with my wrinkles? Mm, I, I cannot claim that to be the case, but it does seem to do a very good job moisturizing the area. It is really gentle and it does seem to have an overall sort of reviving effect that I really like. It's a great budget friendly uh, eye cream and it's a great one to use when you just want to try out lower dosage retinol because it is so gentle it's truly a great product that i have absolutely no negative issues with whatsoever it's a 10 out of 10 again i have already repurchased it i really like it okay and onwards with serums and it's another the ordinary empty and it's the, the Ordinary Alloy 2% NAC 2% Solution, which I liked a lot. Did a full video review on it, used it up, wouldn't mind repurchasing it, but I'm just kind of still trying to get through a couple of serums because I've just been, I, I'll be honest, I've been purchasing too many <laughs> and I'm just trying to reduce what's on my vanity at the moment so no repurchase at the moment i really do like it especially as a an anti-redness solution i almost like it better than my previous favorite the um what's it called a pad the geeky gorgeous a pad serum they are kind of neck and neck but i do almost like this one a tiny bit more um i don't think it's really strongly exfoliating um they kind of are overstating i think what it can do in terms of hyperpigmentation from my end i don't think it did much for my hyperpigmentation but i really value it as an overall hydrating serum that definitely helps to reduce redness it's really good i do think it's a tad overpriced um, this was a PR sample. If I had bought it, maybe I would have expected more from the hyperpigmentation promises or anti-hyperpigmentation promises. But as an anti-redness, gentle, hydrating serum, I think it is a really beautiful product. And then we have this one, which most of you probably know if you are into K-beauty. 
because it is very popular. I just finished this, I think last week, and it's the good old green tangerine Vita C Dark Spot Care Serum. This was in my favorites video. Weirdly enough, not many people watch the one on, on serums. Sometimes I don't always understand which videos do well and which didn't, but yeah, serums for some reason, not but toners you were really interested in my favorite toners of last year anyway this was in my favorite serum video and i really did enjoy it so so much i think it is one of the best serums i've tried for hyperpigmentation and i would absolutely repurchase it it does contain fragrance so that's the only negative for those that do not uh, do well with fragrance but otherwise i think it is really worth the hype it is the number one brightening serum in korea together with the iso eye serum that i also did a video on um, i do like this a little bit more than the iso eye serum i just found it a lot more effective in terms of its brightening uh, power and for my hyperpigmentation it doesn't get rid of the hyperpigmentation but it noticeably faded it and it really surprised and impressed me and one more serum and it's this one this whopper so with the hair oh dear the hair products just kind of <laughs> put hair all over this box <laughs> so this is the our vegan heart leaf 98 seeker serum this also took me a long time to finish because it's a 100 ml bottle at this point it's actually quite hard to find this anymore i think Ololi still has the our vegan range which is from manufactory but yeah somehow uh, apparently it wasn't that popular maybe so it's a bit hard to find i don't quite understand why because this is really excellent such a beautifully formulated serum that i have talked about before in another i think underrated kbut video because i really wish more people were aware of this it is very affordable because it's twice the size um, of regular serums and usually you can find it for around like 20 dollars and it contains heart leaf and i think was it mugwort or sika now sika right yeah heart leaf and sika and it just always felt super super gentle it has a very light runny texture so it's beautiful for overheated skin especially in summer uh, it just really calms down skin like very few other serums can super highly recommended for sensitive skin for redness prone skin also for acne prone skin because it is so light and really great in calming down any type of redness or itching or just it's so so good i don't understand why it never really launched into a favorite don't quite understand recommendation from me then i have a moisturizer that i've also already talked about so much <laughs> i feel in every video recently i've just been hyping up this cream and it's this one which i really also emptied so fast because i used it so much and you can tell i have emptied it <laughs> I didn't cut it open. I was thinking about it, but um, I just tried to squeeze out as much as I could. And this is the Innisfree Retinol Sika Barrier Defense Cream, which honestly is more of a gel, not a really a cream. It's more like a gel, very light gel, in fact, that I don't even know what to say about anymore. <laughs> This might be my fourth video where I talk about this, so I just feel I'm repeating myself continuously. It's amazing. It's not really, for me, a primary moisturizer. I use it more like a treatment almost overnight, and it always leaves my skin so soft and so plump and so smooth. It really has this surprising smoothing effect. It doesn't have a lot of retinol in it, but for some reason, it still has a very surprising and noticeable anti-aging effect on my skin. I do not quite understand the magic of this cream, but it is so fantastic. Super recommended. I will repurchase this. Uh, I might not be sending an, an all of young order this month, but maybe next month. I will absolutely repurchase this. No doubt in my mind. It's fantastic. And then I have three sunscreens that I emptied. 
have been very busy and there's another hyper viral fan favorite in there another beauty of chosun super viral product oh my god they must have made bank with the sales of this particular sunscreen because tiktok is obsessed with it youtube is obsessed with it everyone's obsessed with it and not just i happen to know not just in the us but also here in europe certainly here in germany it is the most viral korean sunscreen and it is of course the beauty of chosun chosun relief sun rise plus probiotics sunscreen it does deserve its virality for sure i really do like it i think this is the third time that i've emptied it i believe it's fine it's not my favorite anymore simply because i feel some of the ones that i've tried especially last year just kind of were better work better for me it's i think so popular because you can usually find it very cheaply you can find it for like 10 11 dollars and i think that makes up a lot of its virality but to me it's almost a little bit too rich uh sometimes um, but I do think it is a great, especially very beginner friendly, teenage skin, younger skin um, sunscreen that I would always recommend and always probably would repurchase if I weren't always so keen on trying new and other sunscreens. But is it in my top three? No, but probably in my top five, I want to say. So it's it's great. I just feel especially the newer Colmar formula is a little bit more elegant to me and a little bit more exciting so yeah i did just i feel maybe it's time for a new viral sunscreen it's, it's just what i feel and on to a sunscreen that i feel not many people know but i actually really liked it and it's the mixun what's it called centella sun cream which is this one also very clearly empty <laughs> Surprisingly, given that Mixun is a very sort of clean beauty focused brand with a strong sort of greenwashing, <laughs> dare we say, greenwashing uh, marketing. I like Mixun, but I don't always like their marketing strategies. But um, given that, it is quite surprising that this is actually a chemical sunscreen. It just surprised me because usually the clean beauty brands tend to go for the organic um, filters because of course chemical, it's all bad, you know, which is of course absolute nonsense. But anyway, this is a purely chemical sunscreen and it is pretty much uh, white cast free. I'm pretty sure it was, was it a comma formula? Uh, it's been such a long time since I researched this, but it was um, one of the big sunscreen makers basically. Uh, so very similar to the other viral sunscreens and just as pleasant. I reached for this a lot and I really, really enjoyed it. I would have talked about it more if it wasn't for the fragrance because I know my audience and I know most of you do not want fragrance sunscreens. This actually contains lavender essential oil which is actually really bad for sensitive skin so i don't know why sensitive skin brands in korea always reach for the lavender <laughs> essential oil in their fragrance and it is really heavily fragranced so it's also not a sunscreen where you can just say or a product where you can just say oh it's a little bit of fragrance and it won't irritate you unless you're very sensitive to fragrance honestly this will not work if you don't do well with fragrance or essential oils. I didn't mind it too much. I wasn't super keen on the fragrance, but it didn't irritate my skin. But I just feel it's maybe not one that I can easily recommend, which is a shame because otherwise it was a very good sunscreen that I really enjoyed using. And on to the last product, which is another sunscreen from Espoir, I don't think you can see a lot because it reflects the white too much. <laughs> and it is the Espoir Fresh Water Splash Sun Cream. This one almost made it into my sunscreen favorites. There were just so many other really great sunscreens that I decided against it because I also didn't want to make the video too long. But it was very, very close because I really enjoyed this a lot. The texture was so, so nice. It is a very light, 
fluid that really doesn't have a lot of um, oil content at all. So it just felt super refreshing and almost cooling on the skin. I used this so much when we had a bit of a heat wave here last year and I do not tolerate heat well at all. Um, I also really love to use this after the gym because my skin gets very overheated and very red. And this really helps to just kind of calm everything down. It just had a very special texture. Even though it's also a Coma Korea formula, it just felt a little bit more unique than some of the other formulas and a little bit more gel-like. It's, it's still a cream, but it has a bit more of, of gel-like qualities, I guess, that just worked very well for me during the heat of summer. And it, I think it's a great one for combo and especially oily skin. It does leave a bit of a shine, so it doesn't dry matte. And it is very hydrating and a little bit moisturizing, but just not as super heavy, I find, as some of the more strongly moisturizing formulas from Colma Korea. This is wonderful. I would absolutely repurchase this one. It does have fragrance, though, so if that's a problem, that one might not be for you. It didn't bother me at all. And uh, yeah, I really, really like this one so, so much. And my box of empties is empty. So <laughs> we're at the end of my January skincare empties. I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, my shorter reviews of the products. There were a lot of really great ones in this pile that I really loved. Some I might, I will probably repurchase if I haven't yet. If you are new here, hi, I hope you'll stick around. It would be great if you would leave a subscription. And if you enjoyed the video, then also a thumbs up is always super appreciated. Plus any comments, well, nice ones. But lately they've been nicer again. There was a time when they got a little bit needlessly sassy, shall we say. <laughs> I hope to see you again in the next video next week. Until then, take care, bye.